Welcome to the 20th episode of ML Backstage. My name is Mars Luna. And I'm Ethan. And we're introducing this podcast straight from the sixth dimension. This is a music commentary podcast hosted by Joshua Luna and Kainalu Kamai. We have people, Ethan. Kainalu's back. Indeed. <laughs> Today, the boys are going to talk about my latest double single, Icarus, the duality of time, and the perils of soaring dangerously close to the sun. Earthlings, grab your popcorn and let's get started. Back to planet Earth we go! What's good, everybody? Welcome to episode 20 of ML ML Backstage. Goodness gracious. Um... My name is Joshua Luna, and I am here with Kainalu Kamai, straight from the Hamlet Department of Ace Hardware. It's been a long time. Uh, for all the YouTube listeners out there, or YouTube watchers out there, Kainalu's eating some kind of burger. Um, chicken sandwich. <laughs> chicken sandwich. Um, good to have you back on, bro. Um, how have you been? Okay, one moment. Sorry, folks. Sorry. <laughs> Few more whites. <laughs> no worries. No worries. That's on me. Okay. Uh, yes, it's been a while, folks. Been going through a lot of changes, positively and some eh. But you know how life is. Yeah. So I just recently applied for Ace Hardware right down the road from where I live, and immediately mm-hmm. got the job. Like the day I submitted my application, I immediately got a call back from the people that work there. And ended up starting yesterday. So today is my second day. And so far, it's so good. I like it. Something Thank different, you. but I'm used to that kind of environment where it's mm-hmm. always busy. Keep yourself occupied, moving a lot of places. And not a stranger to talking to people as well as being a sales associate. Because I've had retail experience in the past. And I know mm-hmm. how it is. You run a business by yourself. Right. So kind, of, kind of the same thing almost, in a way. A lot more stuff mm-hmm. that's going to I gotta learn over the time I train. Mm, what, what exactly is your position at Ace Hardware? So, sales associate basically. Whenever a customer walks in, mm-hmm. you greet them, ask them what are they looking for when they walk to the store. People might be coming in for projects, maybe fix their toilet, or mm-hmm. maybe maybe decide to buy a lot more or anything that is related to the home improvement or anything, bathroom, households, farm, planting, whatever we got to ace hardware, that's what people are there to look for. And then we're right. there to help them. Right. Uh, for sure. It's like the, it's like the local Hawaii version of your Lowe's and Home Depot, basically. Pretty much. And it's also a locally owned. And my mom yeah, knows. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Your mom know everybody for real. Yeah. But, uh, how, uh, what about, um, the ghost bus. So the ghost bus is temporarily off until next year, March, hopefully. But if they do mm-hmm. reopen next year, March, I'm only probably going to work there on the days I'm off. Dang. Yeah. Oh, no day, no days off, ass. So your schedule is looking like Ace Hardware, try to squeeze in some surf in, in your spare time and go <laughs> yep. all the way to like your key. <laughs> What Top a wild that. schedule. I'm here at the Corium, so of course I'm going to still make my commitment for that as well. Man, that schedule looking wild, bro. Well, nowadays when you live in Hawaii, it's all about the money. It's trying to survive. Yep. yep. Unfortunately, just way too expensive. But like, I, but to all the listeners out there, like I was alluding to on the prior episodes, Kainalu and Holo Kaiki, who is our other uh, other uh, co host for those who don't know, have been going through various life transitions of, you know, different levels of intensity, I suppose. And Holo wanted to come on tonight, uh, but he's going through a massive, massive change in his life for the better, of course, you know, so, you know, just, you know, keeping that out there. Um, yeah, he wanted to come on, but, you know, Hopefully the next episode, when everything settles for him, uh, he can join on and come back. But um, as far as uh, for me, I am 
I'm going through a transition as well. Um, I currently uh, am the worship coordinator at a church here in Vegas. Um, and it doesn't only include like leading worship and singing on Sundays, but also kind of, you know, doing more of like the back end stuff and preparing for church services on Sundays and stuff like that. So, you know, it's, it's pretty interesting, pretty chill. Um, uh, and just typical office work really, but, you know, I can't complain, you know, it's, uh, everything is flowing the way it's supposed to. And I know everything could be a lot worse. Um, and everything is going great right now. So, you know, can't complain. Um, also on Mars Luna's end, he recently just dropped a double single called Icarus. And if any of y'all are familiar with Greek mythology, Icarus is one of the characters in Greek mythology who flew too close to the sun, um, and tried to escape the labyrinth or uh, prison with his father and he flew too close to the sun because of his hubris or of his complacency and he his wings his his wings melted and he died and that's kind of an analogy that i've used for uh the mars luna dark matter era coming to a close and i can kind of wrap this this era of mars luna up uh, i'll probably say so yeah i'll go into a little bit deeper about uh the the greek mythology story first but i want to break down the two songs so the two songs are fallen which is essentially a freestyle actually um i wrote these two songs fallen and afraid uh within the last two years and Fallen is basically a song about, you know, uh, understanding that you are, that, you know, we are human and we're all prone to making mistakes and we're all prone to, you know, falling short of, you know, our own moral code, or our own standards, or, you know, falling short of, you know, who we claim to be really. And, uh, it's just kind of a reflection of, you know, who's going to catch me when I fall? Who's going to, who's going to be there when, when I fall short or when I, you know, go off the deep end or whatever, you know, and that's kind of like, uh, the distance for me that I feel between me and God sometimes, or like, you know, or not living up to my mom's expectations or like becoming, you know, a, an exact replica of my dad and, you know, going off the deep end or whatever and kind of facing that fear of inadequacy. And, and that's kind of what Fallen was about. And Afraid. Afraid is a song that I wrote during the, during the pandemic. It was a song, if, you know, for those who don't know, like I normally write songs, like love songs specifically about certain events that the homies go through, like an experience that Kainalu goes through or an experience that Holo goes through or an experience that Scott goes, goes through, you know, and, but this song Afraid is basically my song. It talks about like, oh, I'm, I'm afraid of afraid of being vulnerable basically with you know, with my significant other or you know God bless whoever that is you know what I'm saying but like just being afraid of you know of her seeing right through me her you know understanding and learning about my shortcomings or learning about like oh man like i'm not who you think i am you know will you, you know will you still love me even 
even if I'm like this, even if I'm like that, you know, or that's basically what afraid is. And I haven't really reached out to anybody or I haven't really, you know, dated anybody because I, quite frankly, I'm insecure and afraid and there's nothing wrong with admitting that. And just the desire to kind of to kind of build this relationship one step at a time instead of rushing into you know rushing into failure or you know just just going through a natural growth process so yeah the greek mythology story of icarus i kind of mentioned this earlier um <laughs> revolves around Icarus and his dad, who is the master craftsman, Daedalus, the architect of the labyrinth of Crete. Um, so basically the king um, suspects that Icarus and Daedalus have revealed the labyrinth secrets and imprisons them in a large tower overlooking the ocean. Uh, Icarus and Daedalus attempt to escape using wings that Daedalus has constructed from feathers and threads from blankets and clothes and wax. And, but Daedalus warns Icarus first of complacency and then of hubris, instructing him to fly neither too low or neither too high, lest the sea's dampness clog his wings or the sun's heat melt them. And Icarus ignores Daedalus's instructions not to fly too close to the sun, causing the wax in his wings to melt. And Icarus falls out of the sky, plunges into the sea, and drowns. And the myth gave rise to the idiom, don't fly too close to the sun. And that's, that's basically the brief synopsis of Icarus's story and Icarus's story does apply to uh, the Mars Luna arc, which I will get to in just a bit. Um, the creation of the Icarus double single uh, started because I wanted to make a double single for Dark Matter. And Dark Matter, which is the second Mars Luna album, um, turns one year old in, today's the 17th, so in two days, it's going to turn one year old and and that whole thing was a whole process and i wanted to kind of commemorate it in some way um or at least put some kind of finality to it um to kind of find a way to like move forward from from everything that revolved around dark matter and uh oh uh, so i kind of wanted to create a parallel to the trapped in space record which is basically the lost in space b-side uh, that dropped in april and you know a lot of hmm, a lot of the a lot of the stuff that i wrote during the pandemic era were not really you know we're not really songs that i that I took as seriously as like the albums. And right now the Icarus double single serves as like the final piece of this interlude season that Mars Luna's in. And this interlude season is sort of the end to this sad clown era that Mars Luna was embodying and what Mars Luna went through during Dark Matter was the was a phenomenon called the sad clown paradox, which is the contradictory association between comedy and mental disorders such as depression and anxiety. These com these comedic performers are characterized by feelings of deprivation and isolation in their early lives, where comedy evolves as a release for tension removing feelings of suppressed physical rage through a verbal outlet. And the sad clown paradox is characterized by a psycho, cyclo, 
cyclothemic, I can't pronounce that right, temperament, which encourages the creation of lighthearted humor in a professional setting, despite inner turmoil. The use of humor as a form of self-medication provides short periods of satisfaction, repeatedly needing to deal with inner turmoil. There is an ever-present anxiety amongst comedians that their popularity may disappear tomorrow and hence are driven to exhaustion in their work. And I've mentioned before that Mars Luna's essence is essentially escapism for me. And Dark Matter was probably the only project that I've worked on for Mars Luna that really wasn't escapism for me, but I really wish it was. And, um, and basically, like, if you listen, if any of you listen to Dark Matter, and if you listen to, say, the interludes, or like the skits that I did for that project, and juxtaposing track number three, which is 3am, and um, Love Hotline, which is the track afterwards, there is a sense of like levity in the Love Hotline segments, because the previous song was so dark and it was like basically my suicide note. And I had to kind of embody that sad clown mentality because life life at that time from 2020 to 21 was sad. It was, it was kind of, it could have been a lot worse for me. Um, but, you know, uh, speaking of, dark matter uh dark matter like i said earlier turns one year old in two days on november 19th and i would say hmm, the dark matter hmm, now that i've kind of reflected on it on it for you know quite some time now that the project's been out um I felt like, you know, we did what we could with Dark Matter and the music is still great. I still love the individual songs in their rawest form. I do think that, you know, there was, there was a fallout from this, from Dark Matter. And, you know, like it made me more aware of like who I wanted to keep around me. And it made me evaluate what I really viewed, what music really was for me. And, and Dark Matter was, you know, it, it, was, it was dark, right? But it was, it was kind of, it could have been better. Um, I felt like, you know, I loved the music part of it and the actual sessions that we had together with me, Morgan and Tom, but the process behind it sucked. And it's not that I regret the process. It's just more so like, I don't want to, I made me, made me realize I don't want to go through it, that process that way ever again. And, you know, like, I even talked to Tom in September and, you know, we kind of just caught up on life and we caught up on like, see how we were doing and, you know, he's doing good. And that may, and that's cool to hear, you know, and I kind of wished him Godspeed and not in the sense of like goodbye, but more so like I could tell that he wanted to kind of work on music with me still. And I kind of needed my space still. And it was just kind of like, I hope, hopefully everything's going well for you, but in order for, for us to work together again, it needs to make sense. And it got, and it still hasn't made sense. And I even talked to Holo about this, uh, when, <laughs> when I was back home in September and, uh, and he was, and he kind of mirrored the same. So it, it was kind of like, yeah, if I were to do a, another, big project again for Mars Luna, the process would have to be different. And that was kind of the big fallout behind uh, Dark Matter. It made me more introspective and it made me realize that 
music's just got to be fun. And if it's not fun, then I'm done. And, and fortunately enough, I'm not done yet, you know, because I was able to make, I was able to make music with, you know, just, just fun little projects like, like Trapped in Space and Icarus and the Psychopath uh, music video earlier this year. And even the serious project with, you know, you, Kainalu and Scott, and, you know, those were some, fun, those were some fun times and just, you know, it made me uh, fall in love with music again and just, you know, made me want to keep the train going. And the mindset was really, was really the bigger, was really the biggest difference, uh, honestly. And just, uh, just dealing with the music business stuff and, you know, and, you know, have, have that go the way it needs to go and stuff like that. And, um, just got to enjoy it. Just got to enjoy the ride because music at its core is supposed to be fun. Um, so before I go on to the next segment, um, to those who are new here, uh, welcome <laughs> to <laughs> the, welcome to the ML backstage podcast. Uh, this is essentially a behind the scenes kind of look uh, at the discography of my character that I use for music called Mars Luna. Uh, Mars Luna is the self-proclaimed space alien singer and cosmic prince from the sixth dimension, or also AKA the cosmic Casanova from the sixth dimension. And I'm Joshua Luna and I'm Mars Luna's vessel. And uh, I co-host this podcast with with my best friends, Kainalu Kamai, who you see right next to me. He's here for the vibes. And Holo Kaiki Tovez, who is, a, who is basically the other uh, co-host that we have that's not here right now. Um, and he's going through, you know, he's going through a massive change in his life right now. And and give him, we're going to give him his space. You know what I mean? And, uh, and basically you just kind of, this is kind of like a capsule for me, uh, to kind of, you know, help me understand what exactly Mars Luna's odyssey is about and just the musical journey that I'm on and just, you know, applying regular life lessons to uh, these little projects that I've been doing. So uh, hope you're enjoying the episode so far. Um, we are not natural podcasters by any means. Uh, so, so please bear with us. Um, but yeah, hope you're enjoying it so far. Um, but every, at the end of every episode, we conclude it with either a philosophical question or a fun question uh, to kind of, you know, to kind of engage with each other and to engage with all of you. Uh, so, out, so time is a phenomenon that just doesn't stop. It'll always, it just always keeps on going, right? So, so kind of, Alwin, this is a question that I have for you. Um, Oh, what moment okay. what moment in your life did you feel like time moved against you or you felt like time was conspiring against you like it's not time is not on your side basically oh i have a lot of damn good reasons for this one <laughs> <laughs> and i won't okay, this one's not going to be about my deployment it's going to actually be about maybe recently this year or 2021 2022 oh shoot okay so let's see where can i start oh boy this is a lot of, it's it's how can i, I put this i think we well, both have a lot but go ahead i'll let you start first let's see. okay put this together all right so right now since i got a new job mm -hmm. that's good so before i was still working with the ghost bus because i'm only part-time mm -hmm. and at that time, I still needed to look for a actual full time job to help pay for bills, including the rent, and everything else. So, basically, ignoring things I could have done 
before in the past to help me set up myself for a successful future, kind of watching time go by up before, oh, I think I really need to step up to the plate and actually get my life going in a direction I should be. Otherwise, I'm going to be way behind and back into the bottom of the pit again. <laughs> back at it now, it's just like, wow, it's already almost the end of the year. And mm-hmm. so many things have happened from that on, from that on. And I kind of wish I did take the initiative to take care of things I was supposed to. But knowing me, I can't do everything. I'm not perfect. Also, I do like to procrastinate, which you don't do that. People. <laughs> don't do it. No. And <laughs> Sometimes we just embrace the suck and that's how we end up getting through our life. Right. Some people have it easy. Some people have it bad. People like me like to learn the hard way and it will be hard no matter what. But in the end, you will succeed somehow. Right. But yes, time is very valuable when you get to a certain point in your age. Especially mm-hmm. if you are still almost in your 30s, maybe oh. not <laughs> by yourself and you do not know what you want to do with your life, and you better hurry up because it's going to catch up on you fast. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it will happen. Yeah. I mean, I, I think like you don't want to be naive to the aspect of time, right? You don't, time is deceiving because, like you said, You may, you know, you may live life in the moment and just, you can do whatever feels right in that particular moment, but you don't realize that like, like time is money, like time is energy, right? And time is, you know, it doesn't stop, you know, it doesn't stop for anybody. And, uh, you know, I think, I think the, I would call this the ultimate Mars Luna Icarus moment. Because the t- the the first thing that I could think of that time, you know, moved against me was it was when this is before the pandemic era started, right? So I would say March two thousand twenty. Um, you know, I I Mars Luna song was played at the Golden Knights game. And momentum was swinging really, really high. You know, rocket science dropped and that was doing really well. And, uh, you know, the and then the song got played at the Golden Knights game. The villain got played at the Golden Knights game. And then, like, all of a sudden, you know, you see news about, um, oh, shoot, like, Tom Hanks got, you know, tested positive for COVID and, you know, everything started shutting down and stuff like that. And like, you know, even with dark matter, I felt like, oh, if COVID didn't happen, you know, it, we probably would have got it done quicker. But like, it was like a s- severely derailed the momentum is severely, uh, time severely handicapped me uh, or and everybody too during that period. Right. Um, but you know, just, I think in general, just, ooh, like, you could, you could think to yourself, like, oh, I wish I could have done this. Oh, if only I had more time here. Or, like, oh, man, if I did this at this time, then I probably would be in this spot. But, you know, you can't really do anything about the past. You know, mm-hmm. all you can do is try to you know, correct the mistakes that you did and try to make, you know, your present better and your future better, you know, and that's pretty much all you can really do. So I'd probably say uh, to those who are like in their, you know, early 20s and just kind of, you know, getting getting their foot going, like time, you know, trust your t- the timing of your life, you know, um, and make wise decisions, <laughs> You know, and kind of said, like, don't procrastinate and don't don't play yourselves, you know, be sober minded, be mindful of your time and, uh, you know, don't fly too close to the sun either, because like, just know your limits and know what you're capable of and 
you know, uh, make, make sure that time is your friend and not your enemy. So Kainalu, uh, appreciate you coming on. Um, uh, it's been a few months and, uh, you know, uh, at the end of every episode, uh, we, you know, talk about our social medias, our websites and music plugs. Um, where can, where can the people find you, bro? Uh, Instagram at Nalamon Photography. And then, of course, Twitter at Hawaiian Opa. And Discord, too. Same thing with the Twitter name. <laughs> All just straight up Korean thirst yeah, traps. Yeah. To let you know, folks, uh, Twitter <laughs> support is for the K-pop fandom side. Yeah. And he... my other personal side, but yeah. Yeah, this man's different. Uh, you can find me uh, on Instagram at Luna B. Joshua. Um, and you can find all the music stuff uh, for Mars Luna's music page, um, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at It's Mars Luna. You can find Mars Luna on Spotify and Apple Music at Mars Luna. And you can find out, um, find his website at uh, itsmarsluna.com. Uh, thank you all for watching and listening. Uh, stay tuned for the next month's episode because I believe we have a special guest episode coming or another release from Mars Luna at the end of the year. We'll, we'll, I'm going to have to talk to him about that. Uh, but uh, stay tuned for the next episode. Uh, this is a little rusty for both of us because this is, it's kind of been a while since we've done this together. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned for next month's episode. This year has gone by really, really fast. And uh, as Mars Luna likes to say, um, embrace your odyssey, embrace the strange, and hope you all enjoy your holiday season with your loved ones. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for next month's episode. Shoot. Save me some fucking bye, please. <laughs> what a relief ethan i'm so glad we have people in this episode i was almost ready to fire joshua and yeet him into the sun <laughs> yeah glad kanala was able to make it on this time right yes sir ski Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this episode of the ML Backstage Podcast. If you liked what you heard, follow us on Spotify and Anchor, and subscribe to us on Apple and YouTube at ML Backstage. You can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at It's Mars Luna. You can find all my music on Spotify and Apple Music, and on my website at itsmarsluna.com. Thank you all for listening and hanging out with us. Hope you're all enjoying this episode. Be on the lookout for next month's episode as we're about to have a special guest for real this time. Bye!